Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. I thought I'd have a go at the LED lamp challenge. I've been working on lots of lamps recently anyway, and I had an idea for another one, so I thought I'd use it for this challenge. I've been given this off-cut of old beam. It's made out of pine, so I just had to rip it down. I did multiple passes, raising the blade each time, and flipping the beam over and taking passes from either side. I cut the slice slightly larger than I wanted so I could plane it down and get it perfectly flat as the cuts of the saw hadn't lined up quite perfectly. I cut four slices like this so then planed them down all to the same thickness. My plan is to make these four pieces into a box so I set my saw blade at a 45 degree angle and then I could run the pieces through mitering either side. The box is going to need a top and a bottom to it, so I measured out what the size would need to be. And then I could cut down some nice thick chunks of scaffold board. I want to use quite a thick material for this as it's going to add more strength to the thin sides of the box. I used the mitre saw to cut the pieces square. Next week I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on this saw, as I've had it for over a year now. The bottom piece is going to sit fully inside the box, but the top piece I want to protrude a little and I want to make the shape a little more interesting, so I'm just going to take off the corners. I pass it through four times taking off all the corners and it leaves quite a nice shape. I've raided my box of drill bits and found a nice selection of different sizes of wood bits. And then I just started trying to drill random holes in the sides of the boxes. Or the sides that are going to be the boxes. Trying to be random seems to take a surprising amount of concentration. I seem to naturally want to follow a pattern and repeat myself. But I suppose repeating myself is just a sign I'm getting old. Well done if you're still watching someone drill holes in a piece of wood. I'm getting bored of watching myself now. Right, on to the next clip. Ah, oh, it would be sanding, wouldn't it? Here's someone sanding a piece of wood. Let's try another clip. Gaffer tape. Far more interesting. I like using the tape technique to hold boxes together while the glue dries. Most people seem to use masking tape, and I have tried that, but I find it's not sticky enough for me. And with this project, I don't need to be particularly delicate with it, so gaffer's tape will work just fine. With two strips laid out, the ends of which have been folded over so they're stuck to the bench itself and don't move, I can then lay out the sides. With all four sides down, I can then run beads of glue down the joints. I also run a bead of glue along the top edge. This is to hold the top piece in, surprisingly enough. First I get the top piece in place, and then I can very carefully try and fold up the sides onto it. This is always a bit of a fiddly task, and when I've used masking tape this is normally when everything falls apart and I swear a bit, but with this gaffer tape everything went fine the first time. Also with the gaffer tape you can really pull quite hard on it and get quite a bit of clamping pressure on. I let it dry overnight and then I could take all the tape off. As you can see I'm ripping it off and maybe if this was some nice veneered board you wouldn't want to do that. Or use gaffer tape into the first place. This is a knockoff Dremel tool I've got and I never use it. And I forgot I had it but for this it was ideal. The base is going to need a hole in it for the cable to go through. So I mark out where the centre is. Off camera I've cut another piece of wood about one inch bigger than the base. I then drill through the base all the way and into the bit that's a little bigger I drill halfway through. Then the bigger piece that I've drilled halfway through I can drill through the side going down into the hole I've drilled. I'm not sure I've explained that very well but basically the cable is going to go in the side up through the hole 
and up through the base. So that smaller bit of wood is actually fits inside the box or the box slides over it and then sits on the bigger bit of wood at the bottom. I get a few clamps on it and then that could just be left to dry. If you saw last week's video, you'll know I'm really into burning things at the moment. Last time it was just a light pass to raise the grain. This time I'm going a bit more hardcore. I burn this so much it actually looks like charcoal. At points doing this, the box actually catches fire. But that just helps with the look I'm going for. I'm starting at the top and really charring the top half. And then I'm going to do lighter passes and then leave the bottom natural wood hopefully the burnt effect would just fade down into bare wood. Well, that's the idea anyway. When all the fires have eventually gone out, I use a small wire brush to brush along the grain and remove any loose material. I want to apply some finish and I don't want it to fall off. And I don't want the lamp to be dirty to handle. I googled applying finish to charcoal and surprisingly there was very few results. So I decided just to go for some spray lacquer. I know I said I wanted the burn effect to, to fade into a bare wood, but I didn't like the contrast, so I used some antique wax, or antique pine wax, just to soften the transition a little. This could then get buffed off, and I was much more happy with the transition and with the shine it left. As you've probably worked out, this box is going to contain a bulb, but I don't want the harsh light to come through the holes. I want it diffused a little, so I got some frosted acrylic sheet and cut this down to the size of the box. The table saw did a surprisingly good job of cutting this. When the acrylic is in the box it's not going to get knocked around much so I just used some super glue to hold it together. Again this I think was my first time super gluing acrylic and I was surprised how well that worked. Life was just full of surprises today. After the glue had set, it could slide into the box and it was a nice tight fit. It's not going to move anywhere and it shouldn't break. So, time for the wiring. I've got this braided cable that gets thread through the hole and then can be pulled up through this bigger hole that I created. This is just some two core flex as I'm using a plastic bulb holder. The bulb holder is bigger than the hole so it covers it and can just get screwed down onto the wooden base. To the cable I added an inline switch and then I put a black plug on the end of it. The bulb I'm using is this little LED one that has multiple LEDs on every side and on the top so the light comes out in all directions. As you can see the shade only goes on in one direction. And that's it all done. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more videos.